In recent months, the new tutorial I've been requested to make most often is with regard to two new mods, the Intersection Marking Tool by McSurgy and the No Controller by Kian Zarin. While both of these mods are likely to be updated again in the future, I feel confident that now is a good time to make a bonbon tutorial incorporating both. In today's guide, you'll see how to make crossings like these, remove crossings like these, remove glitching like this, add lane markings like these, field markings like these, and even highway slip roads like this. Hi, I'm Bon Bon B, and you're very, very welcome. But first, as always, head on over to the workshop. The links for both of today's mods are in the description. Subscribe to them along with any and all dependencies, then launch your game. Go to the content manager, enable your new mods, and then launch your game. Or even open the map editor, but more on this later. Whether you're working with your own custom created intersection, a standard junction, or even an oval about, today's mods will take your work to the very next level. Let's start by looking at No Controller by Kian Zarin. But first of all, Node 101. What even is a node? Well, when you draw out any road, this is made with a number of nodes connected by segments. Nodes are the control points, while segments connect these points together. Having more control over the functions of a node means having more control over the appearance of your junctions and intersections. There are two ways to open the mod. Firstly, let's open the road tool in the taskbar. Immediately to the left of this is the node controller button. With this selected, click on the node you want to edit. Right clicking will return you to the road tool or pressing escape will jump you back to the main screen. The hotkey is control N. This opens the tool without the road menu window taking up valuable screen space. Now let's take a look at the curvature of the corners. Imagine being the driver of a truck hauling a trailer, trying to make a right turn. Let's make it a little bit easier for you. With Node Controller active, select the node in the middle of the junction. Now either click and drag the corner offset slider, or hover just above it and use the mouse wheel. Move the slider to the point which looks most realistic. I think 25 is about right in this example. Already the junction is looking a lot better, but we'll come back to this later to make some more improvements. Another advantage of the node controller is to remove encroaching footpaths. Here on the right, we've got an odd artifact. Again, let's select the node and tweak it until the lane merge is smoother. On this occasion, 16 seems about the perfect number, but this junction could be better still. Here we have three crosswalks, but do people really need to get to the center of the oval about? Click the no junction markings button and they are gone. If you really do want a crossing, I'll show you how to add one a little bit later. This node has similar problems. Here we have a terrain glitch, which is cutting into the road. Also, the traffic passing through this node has to take an unrealistic path. Again, we'll select the node and increase the corner offset. Somewhere around 26 feels right. Again, there are way too many crosswalks, so let's remove them all. Now let's quickly tweak all the other junctions on this intersection and the overall shape is a lot more believable. We're almost done with no controller, but what about those buttons at the top? We'll best see those on an elevated junction. Here, as the highway drops down, it levels out as the ramp connects before proceeding back down again. Let's select the node and click Make Sloped. Now the highway is consistent in its descent and the ramp is smoothly twisted to meet it. Clicking Make Flat, it turns it to normal, so you can use the option which works better for you. But we're still not finished with no controller. Sure, we have fixed nodes where roads meet each other, but what about where they don't? While this mod 
also includes a built-in crossing creator. Simply choose the location for your crosswalks and click. A node will be created with a crossing in place. Assuming that you're using Traffic Manager Present Edition, clicking on the traffic light icon will switch between controlled crossing and a simple crosswalk. And since we've removed all of our default crosswalks, how about another one here on the main road? Selecting the node type will allow you to switch between several different types of nodes and sliding the embankment, slope and stretch controllers will let you tweak the banking, gradient and width of the node. You can even use the Alt button to select segment ends to give you a flatter end of street, a bulbous cul-de-sac or even an optical illusion. But it isn't just about roads. Let's have a look at fixing some catenary chaos. Here we have a portal encroaching onto the line. While it won't stop the trains from rolling, it does look somewhat silly. Again, we'll select the node and push the slider until the portals retreat away from the tracks. Finally, there are some global settings in the options menu available by clicking the gear button in the top right of your screen. These include a shortcut rebinder if control N is already assigned to something else on your system and the rest of the base settings I would leave as they are as they are perfectly optimized, but you're free to play with them as you like. While the no controller is the tool that we didn't know that we needed until we saw it, the intersection marking tool by McSurgy is the toy that we always wanted, but that we could never ever have. What we have here is the virtual, if perhaps not complete, death of the road marking decal. Let's go back to our early crossroads junction. Note however that this mod only makes aesthetic changes to your intersections. If you actually want to make the traffic behave accordingly, you'll still need to assign lane instructions using Traffic Manager. So we'll start by opening the mod tool. Similar to the previous mod, open the road tool and next to the node controller button is now the intersection marking tool button. Give that one a click. Alternatively, you can simply use the hotkey combination, Control L. And now you can click on the node that you want to work on. This will open a slightly scary looking window, but don't worry, I'll walk you through it. But first of all, I'm going to drag the window to the top corner for a better view of the screen. Let's start with the traffic turning right from this lane. Giving this an exclusive lane to enter into should help traffic flow much more smoothly. So let's select the start and end points for this line. For a dashed line, simply click the destination. Holding control while you click will give you a double dashed line, while control shift will give you a double solid. But don't worry too much about this as changing your mind is easy. Let's go control shift for a double solid. Now this is clearly the wrong marking and can be changed in the style drop down box in just two clicks. But let's pretend, just for the sake of this tutorial, let's pretend it's a mistake that we didn't notice and that we'll have to come back later to fix it. Let's do the correct marking this time on the other side. Right lane turning into right lane with a dashed line. And we're going to do the same for the two two lane roads turning into the main street. At this point, we notice our earlier mistake. Oops, but how do we fix it? Clicking on the line does nothing. And clicking on the point looks like it starts a new line. Well, we need to look up to the intersection marking box instead. With the lines tab highlighted, if we hover over each item on the list, we'll soon find the line that we want to change. Left click this in the list and then use the style drop down menu to select dashed. To completely delete a line, you simply click the cross by the line in this list. Or you can just click a new deleting line over the top of the old line, which depending on your situation might even be quicker. To delete all of the markings, click the trash can at the top. Deleted items are gone forever, so beware. We've only just begun to look at the options, let's play some more. This time, let's make the middle lane go straight on ahead, but we'll change the colour of the lines. 
You can select the exact color you want using the RGB values or click on the color selection box on the far right and choose from the palette. The A value is the alpha number and indicates the transparency of the marking. Freshly painted lines will be strong while old lines might be more faded. Just for the sake of fun, let's make these straightforward lines wider with longer dashes, shorter gaps and bright yellow in color. Now that's a lot of things to repeat each time, so let's save it as a template. Click on the first icon and give it a useful name, bold yellow, and then click the tick to confirm. Now we have a new template in our list. Now, if we're planning on using this a lot, we could now click on the start icon and set this as the default. But here we're only going to be using it for three more. Let's click out on our second line. Choose the second icon in, apply the template, choose bold yellow, and there are only two more for me to do. And let me just finish adding the lanes and we're done. Next, we're going to add some fillers for some of the paths where the cars will never go. We'll start with this block here. Hold Alt and all the points where the lines intersect each other are shown in red. Click on the first point. You can now let go of Alt, by the way. Then work your way around the block, clicking on each point in turn. When you get back to the start, the filler is completed and added to the fillers list. Here we can choose styles such as chevrons or solid, colors, width, angle, and so on. Again, you can set this custom look as a template or even as the default. Now there's two little arrow shaped blocks near the center. I want to fill these in too, but I don't want the dashed line running through it. So we want a double dashed line to this point. No lines in here at all. Maybe a single dash in the middle, then no dashes before a double dash line to the end. For this, we need to make some rules. So click on the lines tab and find the line that you want to edit and click add rule. Now scroll back up to the top. The start point of our double dash is correct, but the end point needs to be moved. Click the two button and then select the point on the intersection where we want it to end. Then in the new rule that we created, we can add a from and to point for our single dash to the middle. And then clicking to add another new rule, finish with a double dash line from this point to this point. You can obviously use new rules for a whole host of reasons, for example, the field boxes should probably have a solid border. Let me just do this one for you. I'm sure you'll invent some ideas of your own, which we could never have imagined. There's one last tweak we can make. Sometimes the intersection marking tool won't perfectly align with the vanilla markings. We can resolve this by selecting the points tab, finding the points that needs fixing and use the mouse scroll wheel to adjust the offset. Now you're going to want to keep a copy of all of this work so you can quickly load it in next time you have the same intersection or junction. Click the save as preset and give it a handy name. Now all there is left to do is to use traffic manager to assign the intersections to the actual vehicles and you have a finished operational and if somewhat deliberately wacky intersection. And don't forget, you can even move the finished intersection around and everything will stick. Pure genius. And now we have a bonus tip. For all map makers out there, you can now add custom intersections in the map editor, which will load as part of your map in the game engine and will share correctly on the workshop. The subscribing player must have the mod enabled for this to happen though. So be sure to include this as a requirement for your map. However, if the player doesn't have the mod, then the map will not actually be broken. Instead, the intersection will simply load as vanilla. Anyway, I think I've now covered most of what you need to know about the intersection marking tool and the node controller. 
Play about with the settings and options to see what you can create and feel free to share your screenshots over on my Discord channel. The link is in the description. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Join me Monday to Saturday as we try to find you the best map for your next city build and on Sundays for the City Skylines Top 20. Thanks for watching. I've been Bomb Bombi and you've been very, very welcome.